In this video, we're going to install a power feed for a Precision Matthews PM25MV mill. I'm really happy with my Precision Matthews mill. After three years though, what every home shop owner will find is that cranking the x-axis on a milling table any distance gets old really fast. But more importantly, the surface finish you can get from manually feeding a cut versus the finish that a power feed gives you makes this upgrade a great investment. If you own a PM25MV mill, you need to be careful to purchase the power feed specifically made for your mill. Although all the marketing materials show the power feed in this orientation, which is what you would expect from a power feed on a knee mill like a bridge port, when it is installed, it looks more like this. Not a big deal, although the extra overhang means you need a little more room for the x-axis movement of the mill table on the left-hand side of the mill. So you will be operating this power feed with your left hand. For those of you who are Cory fisted, you win. One other hopefully minor consideration is that the extra overhang does put quite a bit of weight further out on the table for a bench mill. Time will tell if this creates issues, but so far it's been fine. The power feed turned up in the crate for the PM728VT. This new mill will show up in a follow-on series about converting a manual mill to computer numerical control. The shipping box was surprisingly beat up, but given how well the crate was packed when it arrived, I assumed that the damage was incurred in the shipment to the USA. The power feed itself was unscathed when the box was opened. This is the parts list shown on the website for the recommended power feed. Keep an eye on the mounting plate shown here. It looks like there have been some changes since I installed mine. In addition to the hardware, you will get a manual, which is a rebranded version of the manufacturer's handbook and includes useful stuff like parts lists, exploded views, and circuit diagrams. Then there is a two-page description about how to install the power feed using the mounting hardware that Precision Matthews provides. This is what the kit actually looks like. Everything has a nice finish, but as you can see, the drive gear uses a straight tooth form. This contributes to the noise level of the drive. Not really loud, but not quiet either. Limit switches are provided to prevent potential crashes. And there is that mounting plate again. So let's get down to installing the component parts. First up is the adapter plate provided by Precision Matthews that converts the standard power feed to your mill. The connecting plate for the mill table needs to be removed from the adapter. That will be installed on the table shortly. The left hand x-axis hand wheel is removed. That leaves the right hand wheel to use for manual operations when you don't want to use the power feed. The adapter plate is secured to the mill using two M8 bolts. Note the warning about over tightening these bolts. If you crank down on them too hard, you run the risk of cracking the table casting. Drive gear is installed on an extender for the lead screw and the set screws are tightened. Mm -hmm. 
I installed the feed without the bearing block initially as a test and to make it easier to video how the power feed mechanism engages with the drive shaft for the X axis and to check the placement of the extension gear. The feed drive needs to be adjusted until a slip of printer paper will be pulled through the meshed gear teeth without destroying it. This will give you about four thousandths of an inch clearance. The plate is finally installed along with the bearing block on the table apron. Note that the power feed will cover the oiling point for the bearing and will need to be removed from time to time to ensure that the bearing can be lubricated. The gears were lubricated with white lithium grease and then the drive was carefully tested. The limit switches have not yet been installed. Finally, when everything looked right, the cover plate to protect stray fingers was installed. The center post is removed to make room for the limit switches. You can see a steel ruler is used as a spacer to provide room for the plate over the y-axis. It is at this point that it became clear there was a limitation in the mounting plate provided. There were no mounting matching holes to use on the table apron. The latest version of the mounting hardware instruction shows a different design of plate that uses the center post holes. However, the parts list on the website still shows my style of mounting plate, so it looks as if there may be an ECO to the parts list. In my case, I used a transfer punch to mark the location for two new mounting holes for M8 bolts. The center punch was used to improve the hole locations, then a center drill was used create a starting hole for the M8 tapping drill. The casting has been surface hardened, so it took some effort to get these holes started. A drill guide was used to keep the drill bit square to the surface, and once through the hardened layer, the holes became significantly easier to drill. The same drill guide was also used to guide the tap.
plate is secured using M8 bolts then the limit switch is affixed to the mounting plate. The existing stops on the table are replaced with the supplied spring stops. After everything is installed, the limit switches are carefully tested. If this video was useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more eclectic builds. Starving creators will be highly appreciative.